Google has had a divisive and turbulent past in the AI world, but I have a feeling they might be redeeming themselves with AI image generation right now. Check it out guys, welcome to Image Effects by Google, this is in their AI test kitchen. We'll talk about how to get access later, let's dive into this thing. This is unlike any other AI image generation interface I've seen to date. Beautiful photo of a cat, let's just generate a very simple basic prompt. Right off the bat, these images are actually really stunning like very good quality and I know you guys probably see the blue highlights on several of the words here we'll get into that in a little bit but check out these images man these images are like genuinely really high quality and very accurate in terms of photorealism I would say that this kind of goes head-to-head -head with mid journey if you guys want a full video where I compare it directly to mid journey and dolly 3 please let me know down in the comments below but get a nice close-up view of this guys this model is is no slouch. Google has plenty of data to play with and they definitely are improving their image generation models rapidly. Okay, so back to the interface, those blue highlighted words from our original prompt. You can see it actually has little drop downs where we can change different aspects of our image. So it's a photo, now it's going to be a drawing of a cat. These automatic suggestions offer a really novel and unique way of interacting with the image generation model. It's more creative, it's more exploratory, and you can see the results speak for themselves here. This model definitely lends itself towards photorealism a little bit more than artistic drawings. I think that's pretty evident by these images, but they're not bad. Definitely stable diffusion level. But what's fun is I can play with this even more. It's no longer a beautiful, it's an ugly drawing of a cat. Oh, and you can see that prompt goes against our policies, even though you basically came up with half of that prompt. Mediocre also against the policies. The policies are extremely strict right now, and they're going to need to relinquish their their control and stranglehold over a lot of these prompts if they'd like us to uh, play around with these models more. Again, this is just an early testing, so I understand why maybe they're a little bit more strict. They haven't exactly worked out everything in terms of figuring out what prompts can be let through and which ones are supposed to be blocked. Amazing seems to yield better results than just beautiful, so we'll do amazing photo of a cat now because I really like those original photo generations. I would say these are maybe even a little bit more realistic than the first ones that I saw so amazing seems to be a better word so now we can actually delete the rest of this and just start off with amazing because we know that's a good precursor for our prompting it's like a natural way that this thing kind of teaches you how to prompt really unique but I mean man the fine detail in this thing is just absolutely staggering sure some of the whiskers are a little bit weird here but for the most part this is really really well done I believe by the way that the model behind this is indeed Imogen two, not just Imogen one. I'm pretty positive this is the more updated version of Google's model. So yes, we do in fact have settings. The only setting that we can change right now though is seed, so we can't change any of those nuanced little detailed settings that you get with Stable Diffusion XL or Stable Diffusion and Comfy UI for example, where you can change everything. All you can change is the seed, so I can make sure that the output is the same. But this does allow us to explore prompts over time, so let's just lock the seed so I can show you uh, how it can be utilized effectively. Amazing studio portrait of a tabby cat surfing a massive wave. I hope you guys don't mind that I'm doing a lot of cat generations today. Okay, and it gives us some decent results here. It's definitely very much a studio portrait of a cat surfing a wave, meaning it looks very fake. It looks like someone edited it in. If we change it from studio portrait to let's say landscape photography, we'll see what that gives us instead. This is definitely my favorite feature of this whole image effects. The fact that we can change these words around with automatic generated suggestions that just allows a new way to explore the model's latent space. You can see in fine details here uh, the model definitely struggles. I don't think this is necessarily because the model is bad. I think Google is just pulling back and hampering some of the fine detail capabilities because they want the generations to just be kind of fast and dirty. AKA we need to have the ability to up the amount of steps if we want to really get the images we're looking for sometimes. Especially with things where the cat is a little bit more far away like this. Okay, let's just delete uh, landscape photography. We'll just say amazing photography of a tabby cat. And again,
again, remember our seed is locked here. So right now we have massive wave. Let's switch to small wave. And you'll see that while our images change, they don't change by that much because we're using the same exact seed. See the wave will go from very large to now very, very small. And it looks more or less like our image is just zoomed in. If I go back to massive wave and regenerate that, you'll see we're back to that same exact photo that we were using before. We can even change it from a tabby cat to a purple cat. Why not? And very little will change about the image. The wave is very similar, but now the cat is purple. So I like the fact that we can lock our seed in and just tweak things a little bit less at a time than we normally would be able to. All right, let's go ahead and unlock it now and try try out some more stuff. Continuing with our animal theme for today, this is going to be a magical spell battle, Warlock Hippo versus Ethereal Chicken, and we'll see what it thinks of this. Oh, this prompt goes against our policies, probably because of the word battle. I mean, this is easily the most annoying thing about this. They've locked this model down way too much. Okay, it's no longer a battle, it's an encounter. Still going against the uh, prompt policies. This is a rut that I just see all of these larger AI tech companies fall into. They're so scared of of getting sued for something like this that they just lock their models down. All right, let's see what that does. <laughs> Still going against the policies. Okay, so apparently in this use case, uh, the word that was actually blocked was ethereal. Shockingly enough. Okay, let's go back to encounter. I want of these two magical spell casting animals to be battling it out. Okay, this one's a little bit closer. Not quite sure what's going on over here. Mm, let's try it in this cinematic style. Ah, uh, this is a little bit more like it. That's what I like to see. That's fun stuff. Still, I feel like these images aren't any better than what you might even get out of mid journey v4 maybe so let's get into what this thing is actually genuinely shockingly good at for as much as they block things with this model for some reason famous characters are oftentimes just able to be drawn with it i mean check it out this is sonic the hedgehog eating a cheeseburger at mcdonald's and he's absolutely enjoying it really really nice generations actually so this is more or less what this thing is really good at so let's say he's now at uh wendy's instead what does wendy's look like for sonic okay sonic is barely in it for some reason we just have two cheeseburgers i'm not sure what's going on with this okay pull it back this time he's going to be eating chicken nuggets at mcdonald's again and there he is with the mcnuggets he is absolutely enjoying them this is something you really can't do with dolly 3 inside of chat gpt so i like to see the fact that we can do famous characters with just mcdonald's and the fact that it's super coherent i mean it's clearly trained on google images right i think we can all agree with that these generations are honestly all really really quite good i'm shocked by how accurate sonic and the mcdonald's logo both are all right let's go ahead and try another famous character. Let's do Bowser. Oh, and Bowser also was able to enjoy some chicken McNuggets at McDonald's. He is absolutely loving them. He's trying to say like, hey, these are my nuggets. Can Bowser also eat a burger? Bowser can also enjoy a cheeseburger as well from McDonald's. However, he looks very much like a toy in all of this, but real life Bowser instead. Okay, this is a little bit more like it. Man, that is a horrifying Bowser actually. Still, it definitely understands McDonald's, the cheeseburger, and Bowser very, very well, which is impressive. This model is really great at some things and not so great at others. All right, let's try Mario. I think we have to try Mario. Oh, there it is. That's definitely real life Mario. It looks like just someone dressed up as Mario eating the cheeseburger. <laughs> some of these look like YouTube screenshots. Like, what is this one? <laughs> oh my God. All right, let's try animated Mario instead. It's truly that exploratory aspect that really makes this a lot of fun. Okay, I guess this is against our policies now. What's going on with this? Okay, apparently you can't have the word uh, animated. How about digital? Okay, digital works fairly well. He's Mario McDonald's for sure. All right, let's try this thing with some text generation. We'll see how this plays out. Okay, this is going all right. I would not consider this to be Dolly 3 level. Maybe even Mid Journey could do better than this, but it's definitely doing some text right off the bat. Let's try Billboard at a restaurant. Oh my god, we got Wally -E for some reason. It is saying, I am not Dolly 3, I am Wally -E instead. Again, showing off the powerful knowledge that this thing has of famous characters. Again, we just definitely need some more steps to generate with this. There's a lot of blurriness in these images. In the ocean. I do love that creative exploring aspect with these prompts. I mean, that is easily the best part. I would love to just have this interface, but be able to plug any model I want inside of it. 
and just play with them. It's such a great way to explore them. And again, we get, you know, Ocean Wally instead. <laughs> it's so interesting, this thing. Photography really does seem to be its strong suit. Here you can see a common issue with uh, AI image generators. I said photo of a man who is clearly not a frog, but it actually makes him a frog anyways. However, the text looks pretty good. <laughs> I am a frog. If we remove this and just say photo of a man holding a sign that says I am not a frog, we'll probably get what we're actually looking for. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I like this one a lot. <laughs> Again, the photography just seems to be an aspect to this model that it really has down well. And the hands, by the way, look at those hands. Not bad, man. Man with six arms. Oh, that's against the policy. I mean, what is going on, Google? Seriously, fix this. All right, how about just one arm? Okay, man with one arm absolutely works, except for this one for some reason. Man with two arms. Oh, prompt is against the policy, not two arms. Oh my gosh. I think this is definitely a right step in the direction that Google should take in terms terms of image generation. It's a unique way to generate it. It lets you explore the model and have fun with it in a way that we've just never seen before. And I really appreciate that. Even if the model is sometimes really good and sometimes not so great. Here, I'm going to share some community generated images. Again, getting access to this thing is something we're going to get into in a bit. Much to Google's dismay, most likely, it was able to generate some celebrities. Interestingly enough, although again, the quality here is not that great. It looks like the model needs some more steps to polish off the images. Here is a fuzzy polar bear plushie sleeping in a minimalist modern bed, and I think this looks very realistic. This one's also quite sharp. Seems to have good training on the photography, as I mentioned earlier. Here is a really nice drawing, actually, of Chicken Little, another famous character, but this time it's, like, literally a pencil drawing. Another realistic image. Again, this one's super uncanny, though, because the eyes just aren't fully realized. It's very real, but also very not real at the same exact time. Here's an example, another user-generated from the Discord server and it actually came out really, really nice. Again, just a little bit weirdness in the eyes and the eyelashes, but the skin here is great and so is the rest of the image as well, including the shirt, the hair, etc. But again, famous characters just seem to be the best use case and the most strong suit for this model, so that's what I would recommend you most use this thing for if you're actually interested in it. As you can see, the, uh, the Discord gets up to some pretty wild stuff. Oh, and here we see even more famous characters this time actual YouTubers, in this case Markiplier eating a pizza. Here the Discord server shows you how they were able to get around that Markiplier eating a pizza realistic, so it looks like if you do it in an alternate text format, it will just produce whatever images you're looking for. So if you guys are looking for access to this thing, here's how that goes. You'll go to the AI Test Kitchen website, and as you can see, ImageFX is right down here. You're going to want to click Launch ImageFX, and depending on your country, you will be able to get get access to this thing. In the United States, it seems to work pretty well, but I don't know about other countries, so your mileage might vary. Let me know what you guys think of this thing. I think it's pretty interesting. My favorite part is definitely the prompting, not necessarily the image model itself, although it is pretty darn good at generating famous characters and realistic images. And if it remains free, it's definitely worth your time as an alternative AI image generator. See you guys in the next one. Goodbye.